Welcome to Pylos, traveler. This area, along with the nearby island of Sphacteria, were important battlegrounds during the Peloponnesian War. My name is Herodotus, and I am a traveler from Harikanassus. I retrace the cause of various events, such as wars and great calamities. I describe what I see and record what I'm told, all with the aim of providing a better understanding of why these things occur. Look for me to introduce you to many sites. I always find it a shame that such lovely looking places were exposed to so much violence. It's difficult to take pleasure in relaxing on the sand, knowing how stained it is with blood. The Peloponnesian War was a great conflict between rivals Sparta and Athens. It lasted many years and cost a great number of lives on both sides. The battles of Pyrrhus and Sphacteria occurred almost one after the other and culminated with one of the most surprising outcomes in the entire war. Ah, but I will not spoil it for you. You'll have to experience it on your own. I'll wait for you at the end of the tour. Since 431 BCE, the Peloponnesian War had been raging between Athens, Sparta, and their allies, with neither side gaining much ground. But in 425 BCE, an Athenian general named Demosthenes changed that. After a storm forced his fleet to stop in Pylos, Demosthenes realized a military presence in the area would give them an advantage against Sparta. Unfortunately, the fleet's strategists did not believe him and left Demosthenes and Pylos with five triremes and 1,000 men. The Spartans, meanwhile, were too busy celebrating a religious festival to notice the enemy on their doorstep. Once Sparta discovered the Athenian presence on Pylos, the Spartan king Aegis mustered his troops and fleet. Sparta then descended on Demosthenes' outpost, attacking from both the sea and the mainland. The Athenian general had to mount a hasty defense. He pulled his boats back to the foot of the ramparts and fixed them in place with stakes, providing extra cover. Then, going against all the established rules of battle, he descended with his hoplites to fight on the rocky shore, where he believed the Spartans would disembark. His gamble paid off, and the Spartans did indeed attempt to land at this location, though Demosthenes' forces made them hesitate. One of the Spartan leaders, Brasidas, decided to make the first move by ramming the rocks with his boat, exclaiming, it's only a few planks. He paid for his actions when his shield slipped into the sea after descending from his boat, leaving him open to many blows. The battle raged on into the night and continued to the next day, remaining locked in a stalemate. However, on the evening of the second day, Athenian reinforcements arrived.
The sudden arrival of the Athenian fleet stacked the odds in Athens' favor. The fleet decided to hold off their attack until the next day when they swarmed the Spartan ships. They successfully captured five enemy ships and damaged many others, cutting off access to the nearby island of Sphacteria. Then, to add insult to injury, the Athenians raised a stake hung with weapons they'd captured from the Spartans, including the shield of Brasidas. Meanwhile, the 420 Spartans on Sphacteria were trapped, and Sparta was completely helpless to rescue them. With 420 of their men trapped on Sphacteria, Sparta needed to reevaluate their position. The Spartans on the island were essentially the Athenians' hostages, and Sparta could not move to rescue or resupply them without putting their lives in danger. In an effort to save the trapped soldiers, the Spartan leadership negotiated an immediate truce with the Athenian strategists. Sparta agreed to hold back its fleet and halt their attacks on Pylos. And in return, the Athenians permitted them to send supplies to their men. In the meantime, Sparta sent ambassadors to Athens to try and negotiate a better deal. The hasty truce greatly humiliated Sparta, as they were forced to recognize just how helpless their infantry was in the face of an Athenian fleet. To bargain for the safety of their men, Sparta sent ambassadors to Athens to propose a cessation of hostilities. The ambassadors tried to emphasize that their situation was not a result of strategic incompetence or lack of strength, but rather plain bad luck. According to them, the Spartans on Sphacteria did not deserve to suffer further because they were trapped through no fault of their own. These statements provoked the ire of Cleon, a popular Athenian politician known for his popular speeches, Cleon insisted that the terms of negotiations be discussed openly before the assembly and the Athenian people instead of in private. The Spartan ambassadors were not as comfortable with public speaking as the Athenians, so they decided to leave. Following the failed attempts of the Spartan ambassadors, hostilities resumed. Back in Athens, Cleon took matters into his own hands. After being elected general, or strategos, he left to join the ongoing battle, accompanied by javelin-armed infantry and archers. With renewed strength and numbers, the Athenians landed on Sphacteria and engaged their enemy. The battle was hard fought, but they eventually managed to surround the remaining Spartans. It was then that Cleon invited the Spartans to surrender, as he hoped to return to Athens with prisoners. The Spartans were exhausted after spending 72 days on the island, so they accepted Cleon's offer and laid down their arms. A Spartan capitulation had previously been unheard of, 
and the news of their surrender echoed throughout Greece like thunder. The Spartans' capitulation completely changed the course of the Peloponnesian War. Athens used their new prisoners of war as leverage and threatened to execute them if Sparta ever returned to pillage their lands. This gave the Athenians the freedom to conduct their own raids, which were aided further by their eventual seizing of the island of Kythera. Sparta tried to negotiate for peace, but were unsuccessful. Cleon, meanwhile, was emboldened by his victory and continued to gain popularity with the Athenian people. Popularity that translated to power. I hope you enjoyed learning about the battles of Pylos and Sphacteria. The battles were hard fought by both sides, but Athens' victory gave them an enormous boost in morale. It encouraged them to be more aggressive, and it was some time before Sparta recovered from the aftershocks of their historic surrender. Now, is there anything else you'd like to do? I'm happy to oblige. Let's begin. Where were the Mostenius and his fleet forced to land during a storm? The Mostenius landed close to the island, but not directly on it. Try again. Laconia was Spartan territory. No matter how bad the storm, it would have been suicide to land there. Try another answer. No. Although the Athenians would eventually seize Kythera later in the war. Keep trying. Yes, the Mosthenes landed at Pylos, where he was inspired to set up an outpost. On to the second question. Which famous Athenian argued with the peace-seeking Spartan ambassadors? Pericles died a few years before the battles of Pylos and Sphacteria. Try again. Demosthenes was too busy fighting Sparta's men in Pylos to argue with their ambassadors. Keep trying. Socrates was a philosopher, not a career politician. Although, he probably would have told you there's little difference between the two. Correct. Cleon demanded the terms of the peace be discussed in front of the Athenian assembly which greatly dissuaded the ambassadors. One last question. Which Spartan general rammed Pylos with his ship? Agis was the Spartan king who gathered his forces after hearing of the Athenian presence on Pylos. Try another answer. Leonidas was a Spartan king who died 55 years before the Battle of Pylos. Try again. Thucydides was an Athenian historian and general. Keep trying. Correct. Brasidas ordered his ship to ram the rocks and lost his shield in the process. You've passed the test. Well done, traveler. Then I will say farewell. Though I hope our paths will cross again someday.